COVID hit the United States in early 2020, meaning we now have about a year's worth of information to help us paint a picture of how this has played out at scale. A February report from Vox took a look at these data, pulling out the larger patterns that have emerged and how they've changed over time. And that's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. The biggest takeaway is that COVID-19 did not discriminate. While the impact of the virus was more intense among certain populations, no one group was left untouched. Over the course of the year, deaths among white people have grown, whereas deaths among black and Hispanic people declined. In August of 2020, deaths among black people were two and a half times the deaths of white people, which decreased to one and a half by early February. But on the whole, the number of infections and deaths still comes out disproportionately higher in communities of color, including younger age groups. Among individuals under the age of 45 who died as a result of COVID-19, approximately a quarter were black and over 40% were Hispanic. Overall, 42% of deaths have been among whites, who represent 60% of the population. The Hispanic population represents 22% of deaths, and the black population is represented 19. Keep in mind, though, that these numbers are far higher than the percent of the population in America these groups represent, at 19 and 13% respectively, making their COVID-related death rates almost double that of whites. The change over time in these death rates appears to be due to geographical changes as the virus raged on, concentrated first in cities with more diverse populations, and then spreading to more rural areas with a greater population of white people. It is important to mention here that a significant factor in this racial divide has to do with a couple things, one being the intersection between race and socioeconomic status. This pattern is currently difficult to see at the national level because of other factors, but can be seen in studies that examine regional data. Another has to do with racial disparities in healthcare, which have also been clearly documented. While neither of these were examined in the current article due to data limitations, we think it's important to keep them in the conversation because it articulates how critical it is to address these known racial disparities. Now on to age. The rate of death among the elderly has been incredibly high, no matter where they live or what race they are. Despite representing only 4% of the population, individuals 80 years and older represent 47% of deaths. Those between the ages of 70 and 79 represent a quarter of deaths, despite only representing 7% of the population. Once you include individuals between the ages of 60 and 69, these three age groups together represent 23% of the population while also representing 88% of deaths. This, of course, does not mean that younger people remained unaffected. Beginning last spring, confirmed cases among those aged 20 to 59 were slightly higher than the portion of population those age groups represent. I urge you not to brush off confirmed cases as inconsequential compared to deaths. As I and others have said before, death is not the only bad outcome of COVID-19. A confirmed infection can lead to poor health outcomes at any age, including long-term health complications. And because some appear to be of the opinion that death is still the only outcome that matters, we can stop and consider how many confirmed cases among young people were then spread to older people who were at significant risk of dying. And this is the poignant conclusion of the Vox article from physician and epidemiologist Sandra Galea. A large part of the issue in 2020 centered on the health haves ignoring the health have-nots. The former ignoring the latter significantly increased everyone's risk, which contributed to the United States suffering more than a half million deaths at this point, a COVID-19 death toll significantly higher than that of any other country. Best in the world. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this recently completed series funded by the NIHCM Foundation on vaccines. We'd also appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to the show down below and consider going on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can make the show bigger and better even during a global pandemic. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.